G'day, welcome to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel, my name's Aaron. Today I'd like to share with you my latest addition to my shop, and that's my three-phase power ring. Now I didn't plan on making a video about this, but after discussing it with Tom Zelikman, he suggested it would be a good idea to document the entire process, as it would help to guide others. The three-phase power ring will consist of three power points on the eastern wall, and one power point on the southern wall of my home workshop. It will also be re a requirement to fabricate a C-channel bracket that will protect the power cable from pinch or impact strikes where it wraps around the brick pillar. Okay, let's get started on the build. After I installed the four power points to the wall, I used a small plumb bob to ascertain where the conduit would be positioned in the vertical run. Using the saddles as a guide, I marked their positions on the wall with a pencil and then used my rotary hammer drill to drill the 6mm holes into the bricks. As I hate mess, after each drilling operation the vacuum cleaner was used to clean up the red brick dust left over from the impact drill. The orange round 5 core 2.5mm cable was then inserted into the flexible conduit and run vertically down the wall using 20mm saddles. 6mm green wall plugs and screws were used to secure them in place. The entire process was continued for the horizontal run, as this was stepped off evenly from the existing 240 volt conduit at approximately 400mm spacing. That's about 15 to 16 inches. As you can see from the video, I worked from the left to the right hand side. Upon terminating at the power point, the final length of the cable and flex through conduit was obtained. To ensure a snug fit of the flexible conduit into the box housing, the lower plugs were drilled out to size. When drilling the plugs, I suggest using a small pilot drill first. This will help you to centre the hole. After the pilot hole is drilled, follow up with your 20mm hole saw to drill out the PVC plastic. Make sure you deburr the plug once finished. You can now see that the conduit slips nicely into the hole. Once installed, I glued my flexible conduit in place. Applied tape and a zip tie was used on the electrical cable once in situ. The C-channel protective plate was next on the to-do list. This was made from two pieces of 30 by 30 mm mild steel angle. Both pieces were stitched together and MIG welded down the middle. Mitre joints were cut with an angle grinder on both opposite ends and bent by hand to 90 degrees. These corners were then fully welded with external welds cleaned up with a flapper disc. Once completed, the bracket was painted and installed onto the wall. Now the only thing left was the wiring of the four sockets. Each individual wires of the 5 core orange flex were stripped with my wire stripping tool and had their ends twisted with combination plies to the recommended length of 16mm. Additionally, you will also note the installation of the black zip tie which I mentioned earlier. This will hold the orange cable in place, preventing movement if pulled hard enough on the opposite end. The five cores were then inserted and clamped off in the power point. Take note of the different colours. Line 1 is red, line 2 is white, line 3 is blue, neutral is black and of course earth is yellow and green. Apparently this dual colour helps those who are colour blind to easily identify the earth. Once all power points were fitted off to the rotary phase converter, its original circuit breaker was removed and a residual current device installed in its place. A residual current device, or RCD as it is known, is mandatory under law as this is now a plug-in system and electric shock could accidentally occur whilst you're plugging in a machine. The three-phase power ring is now completed and awaiting inspection by my licensed electrical contractor. They will remove all sockets and covers, checking over my work to ensure it is safe and meet Australian electrical standards. I did not film this as they did not want to partake in my video. Now all that's out of the way, it's time to turn it on and show it off to you the viewers. The first thing to do is turn on the phase changer and wait for it to go online. The first main switch is turned on, followed by the CNC machine breaker. Now, let's turn on the controller and wait for it to boot. That's out of the way, 
Let's try a tool change to ensure the tool change is going in the correct orientation. And if that works, run a spindle warm-up cycle. OK, let's try out the old pedestal grinder. Awesome, success at last. I can't believe it. OK, let's move on to the old Australian-made wall-down variable speed drill press. Success, yet again, I don't friggin' believe it. This new three-phase power ring will definitely expand my capabilities in my home machine shop. In closing, I would like to thank Mark from Phase Change Converters Australia for his generous help and support, and of course my electrician Roger, for putting up with my continuous pestering and annoyance throughout the entire build. Lastly, I'd like to thank you, the viewers. Thank you for taking the time to stop by my channel and check in on my latest progress. Hopefully I'll get another video out within the next couple of weeks and we can do a little bit more CNC machining or manual machining as it may occur.